Hi everybody. Um, let's get back to our electronics packaging system. Uh, this one I'm going to start chapter three. That's the circuit analysis, and mostly going to be about uh, transmission line. Um, topic three point two from my book: uh, the analog method of our analysis. Let's take a look at the RLC uh, circuit in series. Um, we have our input um, side wave or side wave input source. You can write um, your input source in the term of our EI equal to our EA uh, exponential j omega t. That's the time dependent. And the A is simply uh, the amplitude of uh, the side wave. And you can uh, also write uh, the current in the term of our II equal to our A exponential j omega t in a similar form, where E is the input voltage amplitude in the unit of volt, and our IA is the, the input current amplitude in the unit of amp. And uh, omega does equal to uh, 2 pi f. You know that that's the circular frequency of the signal. Now uh, let's take a look at the voltage drop across the resistor. Voltage drop across the inductor, that's EL. And uh, the voltage drop across the capacitor, that's the EC. For ER, it's simply uh, equal to uh, II, R. And you have RAI, that's equal to our IA exponential j over the t. According to our equation 3.3 uh, in my book. And our uh, EL, you know that uh, the voltage drop across the inductors, that's the L dr by dt. And uh, you can work it as this out. And you get our equation at 3.4 and 3.5 from the book. For EC, that's a little bit more complicated. That's there you can write EC equal to Q over C, right? And I related to Q as the, the differentiate of uh, Q with uh, respect to T. And then uh, your Q simply uh, equal to uh, uh, integration of R E D T. Then uh, your E C turn out to be your um, I over J omega C according to equation three per eight. Eight you uh, can work this out by yourself. Then you know that uh, your E A or uh, the input uh, voltage that's going to be uh, the voltage drop across the resistor plus uh, the voltage drop across inductor and add up with the, the voltage drop across the capacitor. That's going to be your R plus J omega L minus J over omega C and then R A. You're probably familiar with this already. I just uh, review, uh, you know, about our ILC or uh, series circuit. And uh, your total impedance is going to be uh, this term, right? R plus J omega L minus J over omega C. That's the total impedance in series of the circuit. And you can also uh, write the magnitude of your impedance simply equal to this term, according to our uh, equation 3.11. Now let's see the plot on the E plane. Um, you have the real and uh, imaginary part, and uh, you can, can plot the x axis. That's going to be the real part, and uh, you have our. That's the for the E plane. You simply have our. Uh, this one is the R I A. And for ima imaginary part, you know, you have this term, omega L, 
uh, minus 1 omega c and then uh, multiply by ia that's give you in the unit of volt right because you're talking about a plane and also the phase uh, going to be your arc 10 of our imaginary part divided by the real part and uh, you can work this out um, this is your uh, the phase and then uh, your the voltage that's going to be uh, the impedance multiplied by uh, the current right the total impedance so that's why you have a uh, equation 3.13 Let's take a look at the some example from the book. Problem 3.3 .3 for circuit shown in figure E 3.3. Uh, .3 determine uh, A, the impedance, B, the voltage drop across the inductance, sorry, inductor EL, C, the voltage drop across the resistor. resistor. And uh, you simply uh, write A for the total impedance that's going to be R square plus the omega L minus 1 over omega C R square and then uh, to the power of one and a half you just plug in number you know R right you know omega that's 2 pi F and uh, that's the your frequency 10 kHz that's going to be your uh, 10 uh, multiply 10 to the third and then uh, what else you have L 20 micro Henry that's 20 or 10 to or negative 6 and you have C what 15 picofarad and uh, P is the 10 to or negative 12 right so I work this out I have a total impedance to be uh, 1.06 10 to the 6 ohms B, the voltage drop across the inductor. You know that uh, your EL, the magnitude of your EL, that's going to be your omega L IA. What you have to do is just plug in number. You already have equation according to uh, the voltage drop across the inductor. And I have uh, the voltage drop across the inductor to be 1.18, 10 to a negative 5 volt. And uh, the last one is ER, simply equal to RIA. And your A is the, the voltage, the uh, input voltage divided by the total uh, impedance of the circuit, which is the, you already work out on the A, that's the 1.06, 10 to the 6. That's why I have uh, the number down here. And this is your voltage drop across the inductor, oh sorry, uh, resistor. Problem 3.4, find the plane anchor phi for the circuit divided in figure E 3.3, .3 also determine the current amplitude IA. Where were the phase anchor, you know that uh, you have this equation, the R10 over imaginary part divided by the real part just plug in number straightforward okay so that I, ha I don't have to explain this too much um, finally you have uh, the phase to be uh, negative 90 degree or negative 1.57 radians what about uh, IA the amplitude of the current well, that's going to be uh, equal to uh, the amplitude of the input voltage divided by the total impedance. That's the 20 divided by uh, 1.06, 10 to the 6 ohms. And this is your uh, the amplitude of uh, your current. Problem 3.5, prepare a graph similar to uh, that presented in uh, figure 3.3 .3 that indicated the intercepts on the real and imaginary part 
the phase angle and the voltage E A. Well, this is your E plane. Uh, actually, you know, I'm not doing like very good on this one, but you just pick up number. Um, you have uh, on the real part, you have R I A, and for the imaginary part, you have R A omega L minus one omega C, and we already worked out before for a multiplied by uh, omega L minus 1 omega C that's going to be a uh, negative 20 M and our RAA that's the real part that's the going to be a uh, 1.88 10 to a uh, negative third four. and the magnitude of your um, the voltage that's the 24, you already know that, and the phase anchor we were, we already worked out uh, right here, that's the negative 90 degree. And this one is supposed to be here, you know, down here, but you know, as I said, like, on that scale. The next topic is the transmission line uh, theory, or TL, TL uh, theory. This is your equivalent circuit for a transmission line with uh, the length dx. You have our L prime, R prime, C prime, and G prime. L is, uh, they all call a uh, um, characteristic, I'm uh, sorry, um, distributed, you know, um, Hold on a second. Did I missing something here? No. Okay. Sorry. Um, well, or you have uh, the transmission line with the length dx, and you start with the, the voltage uh, at this point. That's the Vxt, and on the most right, that's going to be the voltage at this point is going to be a V plus the partial derivative of uh, V with uh, respect to X, the X. Okay, so uh, uh, you can see that the your voltage along uh, the transmission line change. And same as the current. You have the current down here, that's the I X T. And uh, the most right of the transmission line, the current is going to be your I plus the partial derivative di over the x and multiply by the x. And uh, for uh, your inductor, you're going to have an uh, inductance to be L prime dx um, and R they are all in a uh, series and you also have uh, your capacitor in uh, parallel with uh, the conductance conductor okay that's why we have our uh, c prime here and g prime here um, that's equivalent circuit and i do a uh, summarization from uh, you know the figure here on the equivalent circuit of uh, the transmission line. Former uh, parameters L prime, uh, R prime, C prime, G prime, that's the distributed parameters of uh, the transmission line. First, you're going to have the term uh, propagation constant, that's the represented by uh, lambda. It's going to be a uh, uh, real part and uh, imaginary part as their alpha plus j beta and uh, you can write lambda in the term of our r l's r prime l prime t prime and c prime um, as the equation are three point two six so now take a look at what, uh, what is alpha, what is beta, beta, 
The alpha is actually attenuation constant. It tell you uh, how uh, your voltage will be uh, attenuated when uh, the voltage move along the transmission line from the source to uh, uh, the load end, or in terms of uh, on the right of your circuit. And uh, beta, that's the phase constant in the unit of a radian per meter. Well, uh, you can uh, write this one I summarized, you know, how because this is the uh, in the term of a square root. You can write alpha square is going to be equal to this term and beta square is going to uh, equal to this term according to our equation at 3.27 for a special case um, you can say uh, for lossless line r equal to r and g actually is supposed to be r prime and g prime that's the very very small or getting close to a zero uh, that's lossless line so uh, your lambda is going to drop to be uh, only uh, j omega square root l prime c prime and uh, that's equal to uh, j beta right because you know that your lambda equal to alpha plus j beta in this case your alpha equal to zero same as the omega l prime if uh, omega l prime much much greater than r prime sorry this one and uh, omega c prime much much greater than g prime that's the conductance uh, that's going to be uh, the case of lossless line um, that's according to uh, equation 3.28 from the book also uh, you can write characteristic impedance z0 in the term of r prime l prime uh, g prime c prime as the i believe in the equation 3.30 so that's going to be your characteristic impedance of the transmission line is tell you about uh, the reflection about matching um, you will see uh, you know examples later on um, this one is give you a clear picture we have a reflection coefficient TL at the end of uh, the line or at the load your tau L that's going to be a ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL plus Z0 for the case if the match you can see that uh, that's the special case. Um, if your ZL or the load impedance equal to our characteristic impedance Z0, you have no reflection from the, the load end. That's what you're looking for. For a shorter circuit, your ZL equal to uh, 0, right? And uh, that's give you a tau L equal to uh, negative 1. And for uh, open circuit, your ZL is, is very, very large. And your uh, tau L, that's uh, equal to 1. This all very, that's the worst case. You really don't want this one because the it's going to uh, uh, distort your uh, signal, you know, along. Uh, you have a distortion, you know. Uh, for a signal along the line okay let's take a look at the uh, example problem 3.8 determine the characteristic impedance of a low loss transmission line if the distributed inductance is the 12 feet sorry uh, Fenton Henry per feet and the distributed capacitance is the 2 picofarad per feet where are your zero 
equal to this equation and for the loss transmission line R prime getting close to zero G prime getting close to zero or is very small and then uh, you have your Z zero you just plug in number for L prime and C prime that's give you a Z zero characteristic impedance to be 0 0.08 ohm next topic 3.4 sinusoidal signal propagation or transmission line there were uh, let's consider the voltage you know, along the line you're going to have for V forward and V backward you have a V backward because you have a reflection from the end of the line you can write V as the VF you know at any time um, equal to a V forward plus V backward and for V forward you can also write in the term of A exponential negative lambda X um, if you not consider about the time domain the time domain simply exponential J omega T okay and uh, for VB, you can also uh, write in the term of uh, only x domain, that's the B exponential lambda x. You add them together, V equal to VF plus VB, that's give you equation at 3.25. Topic 3.5, uh, termination of transmission lines. Let's uh, take a look at uh, some uh, special cases. For open circuit termination, uh, your ZL, the load impedance, that's the very large or infinity. Um, at this, at the end of the line, we set this one as x equal to zero, and uh, at the source, we set x equal to uh, negative per L. L is the length of the transmission line. Okay, let's take a look at the open circuit uh, termination. You know that there's no current flowing because you have no uh, load uh, impedance at the end of the line. So your current equal to zero. And your current simply equal to work. V over Z, right, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, according to Ohm's law, and your Vx is the this term, and uh, you can just at x equal to zero, you just plug in x equal to zero. So you, what you have left is the A minus B over Z zero, and at this uh, load end, or uh, Sorry, yeah, at the lot n, your i equal to zero. You have no current flowing, so that's give you a equal to b. You can write, you can re rewrite uh, v x that's equal to a uh, multiply the whole thing uh, exponential negative lambda x plus exponential uh, lambda x, and that's also our i is going to be uh, equal to this term. Please keep my please uh, notice uh, for V is look is may look similar but this one is the positive sign but this one is negative sign. Okay. Um, now look for uh, source impedance on Z is zero or uh, Z or the impedance at X equal to uh, negative L or at the input source. So you just plug in uh, X by uh, L and uh, that's give you uh, this term and you know that this one is turned out to be your cotangent cotangent uh, lambda L according to equation 3.22 uh, in general, 
lambda l much much the less than one because the the indicates th that one that lambda is very small and uh, you can approximate when the uh, lambda l is very small you the hyperbo hyperbolic tan uh, lambda l actually is equal to uh, lambda l then uh, the source impedance drop to be uh, z s zero to equal to uh, z zero over lambda l now uh, you can uh, since you know uh, z zero or uh, the character Listed impedance of the transmission line is equal to this uh, term, and uh, your lambda equal to this term. That's the propagation uh, constant. Then uh, your zero uh, end up to be one over L multiplied by G prime plus J omega C prime. And for uh, the low loss transmission line your g much much less than omega c prime then uh, your um, the source impedance is going to be uh, 1 over j omega l prime c prime or equal to negative j over omega l prime c prime according to uh, equation i that's the for the open circuit uh, termination now or for uh, short circuit termination you know that at the end of uh, the line your voltage equal to zero because this one is connected to a crowd since the vx equal to uh, a exponential negative lambda x plus b exponential are uh, to uh, lambda x at x zero your voltage is zero and that's give you a plus b equal to zero or a equal to a negative b then uh, you the then your voltage at uh, any x i mean along the transmission line that's going to be your uh, uh, this term and uh, your current going to be this term now for the source impedance z uh, is zero or uh, x equal to uh, negative l at the source um, you end up with uh, z zero hyperbolic 10 lambda l according to equation 3.3 and for lambda l equal to less less than one uh, your source impedance is going to be uh, this term you can work out by yourself um, for low loss transmission line you are prime much much less than omega l prime so you end up with uh, uh, your z or a zero end up to be your j omega l l prime okay this is very straightforward you can also repeat uh, by yourself. And our topic at 3.5.3 transmission lines with uh, arbitrary termination impedance. You are uh, you can set up your ZL that's going to be uh, V over I at X equal to L. Sorry, you know, uh, negative L. Sorry. I'm sorry, at x equal to zero because we're talking about uh, the load end. Um, and uh, you already have uh, your v at uh, any x that's equal to a exponential or negative lambda l plus b exponential uh, to the power of uh, lambda l. And you just plug in uh, x equal to zero, so uh, you end up with uh, a plus b over a minus b divided by zero. That's give you uh, 
uh, the load impedance. This is one is more complicated because the, we're not talking about a short end or open end. This one uh, will guide you uh, to find your the so uh, source impedance. You end up with the uh, equation 3.36. Where we start by uh, find the ratio of uh, B over A because you can write B or A, uh, a in the term of B or the ratio uh, B over A. Um, you know that uh, you uh, just pick up this equation, you have zero equal to Z zero A plus B over A minus B. Then uh, your b over a going to be zl minus z0 over zl plus z0 or a p then uh, from uh, the source impedance equation you have v of course at x equal to uh, negative l you just work this out you have our A and B, but X you represent by L, sorry, negative L. And this one, I put this one wrong. It's supposed to be what? Uh, which one I'm the wrong? This one. That's supposed to be positive. Sorry. And uh, for I, because you are L, because you are X equal to uh, negative L, so this one's supposed to be positive. You know, sorry for my mistake. But uh, you can work out by yourself, and uh, this is your Z is zero. Let's take a look at the problem uh, 3.9. For an open-ended lower loss transmission line with a distributed uh, capacitance of uh, 20 picofarad per feet, determine the impedance of the line if it is uh, 30 feet long and uh, carry a signal with a frequency of uh, 500 kHz. Well, you already know uh, the open end uh, low loss transmission line, your uh, source impedance equal to uh, 1 over G prime plus the J omega C prime multiplied by L. And for a low loss transmission line, G prime much, much less than omega C prime. Let's give you a uh, uh, we just plug in the number, you know, omega for 2, two pi f, you know, c prime, you know, l prime. Okay, so that's what I end up with there. The source impedance to be a negative 530.52 ohms. Okay, so that's all for uh, the series, and we, uh, we sh I will show you a more example uh, in the next video. Okay, bye.